Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, it's EDC time. I know, crazy, we're in 2022 already. It feels like yesterday I did the 2021 video, something I do every year. Just insane, amazing how time flies. We've got some new things, some trusty old favorites. Uh, before we get into it, please don't forget to like the video. It really helps me, uh, especially if you wanna see more free content like this. Do a wristwatch check before we get into it. I'm wearing the old subby and it's on the waffle strap. This was on my uh, Rolex Explorer. I put it on this and I think it works better with this combo. And this is a great strap from Wrist Candy Watch Club. Definitely one of the best rubber straps I've ever experienced. And I'm not just saying that, I really mean it, especially for the smaller wrist. The comfort and, and substantial build of it is just, yeah, they've, yeah, they hit it home run. What can I say? Anyway. Um, Without further ado, let's roll the intro and get in to today's EDC video. So we'll start off with uh, a few regular items uh, that haven't changed from last year. Uh, the phone is still the same, although I have to admit I have no interest in phones whatsoever. Um, so this could be an iPhone 4, 5, 6, 7. I honestly don't give a hoot what it is, but I do like to have something related. Um, this is a favorite art um, engraving of uh, Dura. And those of you into horology will know this famous um, engraving from the German artist of the High Renaissance and its horological significance. I did a video all about it. I still have the this this fantastic little multi-purpose tool. As you can see, you've got a Philip screwdriver there, screwdriver there, and also um, to pry things open if need be. Really useful stuff. Very uh, affordable. I'll put this in the Amazon store. So I've always got that little tool. And actually, I put it usually with the hole. You can store it in the key holder from uh, Carl Friedrich. This has been updated. I'm not sure what the new ones uh, are like, but uh, yeah, this fits perfectly inside there. So you can just pull it out or unscrew it if you really need it. Uh, what else? Yeah, I still got my MP3 players. A lot of people every year I get the same comments. Oh, why don't you just listen to music on your phone? Well, I have a lot of um, different colors of these. These are cheap as chips. So different colors for different things. So for example, on this one, I have, um, I'm listening to a lot of Barbero uh, about history and all kinds of stuff. And I don't want to be dependent on my phone. So, oh, and um, these are the same Sennheiser. These are great. This is the CX300 II. I think these have been updated recently. Amazing headphones. The frequency response in these are great. These are better than, um, you know, Beats by Dre or most high-end um, headphones they're, they're fantastic um, and they're very very affordable but be careful when you're on the street because that noise cancellation um, can be a little bit dangerous so i actually have very cheapo headphones for when i'm jogging and stuff so I, so i can just keep tabs of my surroundings now next is rings and i typically wear two rings my wedding ring and a signet ring and occasionally uh, what i call a decorative uh, ring and they vary in style dramatically. Now I am going to do a video just about uh, rings because there's so much history, there's so much to discuss, the etiquette, the rules, the tradition, the different types of rings, gemstones, everything, the best places to buy and have yours uh, custom made. I actually designed both of these actually, uh, uh, bespoke jewelry that I designed. It's just something I love to do. It's another little hobby aside from uh, watches. So, so stay tuned for that video. These are done by, uh, as you can see, Oxford Signet Ring Company. You can go for the traditional. You, I have ones with uh, stones. And that's the actual wax impression of that. So that's very, very cool. Alternatively, um, you could have something like this made. If you don't have a crest or you don't want to have your family crest, I'm not sure if you can see that. You could just have your initials and a really nice motif. Alternatively, you can have your birthstone. Mine is... Amethyst, because my February is uh, my 
Oh, one of my birthday is. And look at that the gothic setting there, just stunning detail, really beautiful. And if you want to learn more, I highly recommend this book, all about gemstones. It talks about their properties, their use in art, history, uh, the hardness, the meaning. Um, oh, there you go. There's amethyst, of course, where they're mined and all of this kind of stuff. And um, really interesting. I highly recommend this book. Okay, let's talk about pens. Well, you know me, the Parker Jotter is my favorite, although I've got tons of pens. I've got high-end ones from Cartier. I've got the Fisher Space Pens, which I've discussed. I actually did a video all about them. But the Jotter is always so close to my heart. It's a family tradition. I love the wide variety of colors and styles. I have an Art Deco one, I have a blue one, I have a red one, I have a two-tone, I have an all steel like the one in Mad Men. It's endless, they're collectible and very affordable and they're just solid. A lot of you will say, oh, why don't you get a fountain pen? Unfortunately, you know, being dyslexic and my handwriting being so terrible, I just don't see the point of spending that much money. This is a class four grenade. Three clicks, arms the four second fuse, another three disarms it. I also like the, the robustness of them and the fact that they don't leak as much as fountain pens. So yeah, and that iconic click. So this is a two-tone variation. I had the old steel, as you can see by my watch there. I'm obsessed about two-tone at the moment and before that gold. But I have to say, um, obviously I don't carry both. You know, I alternate, I have pretty much every single color. If you notice, it's a little slimmer compared to your typical Jota. And with this matte black finish, it's just so easy to grip. Uh, I've got in the habit of jotting down all my Italian vocab in these little inexpensive, easy to replace, and I just store them when I fill them up and I can go through them. Something else that hasn't changed is you've seen this before, I, I included it, I can't remember what video. This is my little grab and go kit, um, because sometimes uh, we've had emergencies in the night where uh, we had to run out um, because of fire alarms or whatever, and I wanted something that was just, you grab one thing and you've got, you know, essentials. Flashlight, it's the same flashlight as before. I forget what they're called, what is this company? Streamlight, there you go. As you can see, it's really been used. I love this. You can flip around this and clip it to a cap. Very useful indeed, which I've done. Compare it to the leather of, let's say, my wallet here, my, my classic, this is the Swanfield from Carl Friedrich. God, this is really cheap and nasty compared to this beautiful handmade luxury quality here. If anyone has a suggestion of something a little bit more um, uh, high-end, but I just like the size. It doesn't interfere with any clothes you're wearing. These a little bit too long. It's uncomfortable for the belt. This was a gift from Michael, my good friend. Shout out to Michael. You guys know I did um, I did a whole video on the, um, the NASA, the famous NASA space pen. It's the same thing, just in more compact form. In fact, actually, let me show you the box for this. Craters and stuff, very, very cool. Amazing, the space pen, the Fisher space pen. Really great American story and brand. Doesn't match my other leather goods like the Unico here, which I have to say, um, I love the way it's gaining that wonderful patina, that lovely cognac. Uh, I designed this obviously to fit hundreds of watches. And you've got the suede interior. I've talked about this endlessly. Primarily, I have carry the Hanhart everywhere because this was such a, an important achievement for me being involved in bringing back this classic watch that uh, I always have it in my pocket now. I never want to leave home without this. This is just so special to me. So. Um, Oh, dear old Hanhart. Underneath the pillow, I always have a, don't laugh, I always have a, <laughs> uh, my Valor strap. Again, this is the first collaboration I did with Miss Caddy Watch Club. Very important if you know the story behind the Crimson Red and its historic significance and meaning to me. I actually always keep this on me, one of these. This is the most important strap. I've, obviously, I've done a ton more, but I keep it at the bottom of this. Time to talk about jewelry. This is another hobby of mine. I custom design a lot of my jewelry and I always look for something a bit unique, a bit special. I belong in the time of the Medici's. I've always felt that. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen the, the amazing jewelry they had? Just amazing. Anyway, yeah, off on a tangent. I like to wear a, a chain, um, typically with a pendant, something meaningful, either um, uh, to do with faith, spirituality, places I've been, a symbolic reminder of strength to keep going, etc. That that kind of thing. 
Uh, a great example is, I'll show you right here, the Aztec calendar. This is a scale replica of the one in Mexico City at the uh, Zocolo, which I saw it in person and it had such an effect on me. The history behind it, the horological meaning, this amazingly advanced uh, understanding of stars and uh, astronomy and maths. I adore the country to commemorate that trip, which was just a wonderful time. I, uh, I bought the pendant in solid gold afterwards. So yeah, you can, you can do that kind of thing. Um, but typically it's either, for me, it's either something religious or about um, personal beliefs and that kind of thing. So let's take a closer look. I had this pendant custom made. Actually, that I should mention that my wedding ring, again, this is custom made with the Momento Mori. Uh, this is a, I believe this is a, called a, either an anchor link or a Gucci link. I, I love it. It's very Italian, very solid. Uh, it's quite thin, but strong enough. It's not going to break. This is a genuine Roman coin with Marcus Aurelius. You guys, if you follow me, you know that my favorite book is Meditations. And I hate to say this because it's kind of cheesy, but that book really changed my life. It shaped my outlook on life, how I think, it gave me strength in, you know, the darkest moments. This is actually almost 2,000 years old, and uh, I made sure that it was sourced from the UK because obviously it reflects my heritage. When picking the right chain for you, the two most important aspects are fit and material. Uh, length in particular. Um, the longer the chain, it might smack on the ground if you're doing uh, press-ups, that kind of thing, or you know, get tangled easier. Uh, too short, and when you're sleeping, it'll feel like it's choking you. So you've got to get something that's comfortable, try and work out where is the ideal length. Uh, the other thing is material, obviously. I tend to go for 9, 10, and 14 karat gold. The higher the gold content, like 18, 22, the, the more kind of yellowish it looks, and also it's more malleable. It's, it's not as strong, because obviously lower the gold content, you've got other metals in there which make it a little bit more robust. If you're on a budget, steel is great because it's really, really tough. And then of course you've got silver, which will tarnish. What else? I tend to wear it inside. I don't have my chains untucked. Again, that's just preference. I highly recommend the uh, Byzantine chain. This is a really heavy, strong chain, a little bit too thick for my liking. It's about two millimeters. This is a new one. This is the Franco. Uh, this is a diamond cut Franco. This is one and a half millimeters. And I have a, a classic Jesus piece. The design was um, actually inspired by the uh, Turin shroud. And of course, you know, made popular by Biggie. And I bought it from Jukoji. And I saw many uh, reviews of their products. So they have a fantastic channel. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed. Uh, with the quality, the packaging, the delivery. Um, this is a little bit too thin for my liking, but it's the only one they had in stock in the 20 inch size. I had one of these in the past and it did snap, but I mean, after years and years of wearing, just compared to the two millimeter Byzantine link. This is called a Boston link, not the best strongest. And I have an antique chain. This is, um, this is in uh, eight carat. You see, you see the different color gold. This is, I don't know what this link is called, if anybody knows. This is um, uh, Edwardian, so really, really old, but st stood the test of time. So yeah, I, obviously I don't wear them all at the same time. I'm not Mr. T, but um, uh, usually I wear this one because having something almost 2000 years old from the UK that the Romans brought there is really, really special. Talking of pendants, I just bought this from Italy. Most of the jewelry is from Italy. Uh, I wanted a little traditional cross there. Tiny little uh, classic Italian, like the one they have in Assisi. It's very simple. I'm gonna buy a, a chain from Jacoji for this. So a massive thank you to them. Certifico di, di garanzia qui. E poi hanno messo l'indirizzo dentro. Aspetta, ti faccio vedere. Eccolo qui. Eccolo qui, anche hanno mandato con quello piccolo gioiello lì una guida per Modena. Che bello, eh? Guarda, c'è una mappa dentro. This is where the, the Ferrari come from, Modena, of course. And you can find them online. I got their details here. There you go, with the classic Botticelli art there. Via dei gioielli. Ecco. 
there she is, Venus. So let's talk about leather goods and wallets. Now, as you guys know, I have been a supporter of Carl Friedrich since the beginning of the channel. And I'm so proud of them, so happy to see other influencers and YouTubers endorsing the brand, but never forget where you saw them first, right? And they've even been featured or their, 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 their luggage in succession, the um, relatively new HBO show. So congrats to them. It's fantastic seeing them get the recognition they deserve. And I've been telling you about them for ages. The quality, the quality of the construction, the designs are classic. They're going to age beautifully. They're never going to be, you know, like some of this tacky uh, designer stuff, which most of the time is inferior in their build quality i'm just being honest now i have decided to update my uh this is the swan field which i've had since the beginning of the channel and so well made i had it personalized it it's just oh got so much beautiful patina i love look at look it almost becomes polished because look this is obviously newer it transforms from that to that just fantastic in the wear from being in my pocket i use this every day obviously but i wanted something a little bit bigger so i've got this and the reason is oh they've sent me a letter that's pretty cool <laughs> thank you carl frida oh that's nice oh that's really sweet so it comes like this and of course this is the same vaquetta leather but this is a little bit bigger so this is the Walden and this is the Swanfield. Now I'm still gonna use this. This is, you know, you can use for your whole lifetime, handed down the generation, etc. But I wanted something a little bit bigger because I wanted to have my money on the outside like this. This also has the little tab. You can put something in there and then pull the tab. The same single filament stitching, which just makes it last forever. I had it personalized again, obviously with the gold. I went for black this time. The reason was I wanted more card slots. So this has, um, I think six, six to eight card slots because when I was in Italy shooting, after we were done shooting, we shot so much footage. There were tons of little memory cards like this and I didn't have anywhere to put them. Petrified losing them because obviously, you know, when you're directing a whole film crew and thousands and thousands of dollars have been spent every day to get you there. I wanted somewhere safe. So I'm, I want, extra little pockets and this is just perfect because they can be on me they're not in a bag all in one unit and then i have my cash because typically i have cash with a money clip so i have it all concentrated in one thing so this is really going to be my traveling shooting wallet so to speak because obviously i'm gonna i've been hired to do more videos like that directing film crew etc uh, i really love doing it and this is just my everyday just realized I haven't talked about knives. In my um, grab and go kit, I always have the Grippy or the Griptilian from Benchmade. You see, I didn't say Benchmark. I got it right this time. Listen, um, there's a lot of like knife snobs out there. Um, so, oh yeah, you should buy this. You buy. Listen, I, I love this knife. For every day, this knife is the perfect size. It, it's so well built. The blade of the size is, is perfectly fine here. You know, obviously check the rules and laws where you live. So this might be completely illegal where you live. So always make sure. But this, I just, I, it's just the right size. It's, it's perfect for me. And for the rest of the time, I really love the classic Leo. I still have my bunch of Oppie nails. I still have the uh, spider coes and a whole bunch of other stuff. But these two are really my favorite. Oh, and case knives as well. I love the classic sophisticated look of this. It matches. Again, two-tone. This is the real McCoy. There's a lot of imitation Leon knives. Just like every time I talk about this knife, you're gonna get half the French people saying, oh, it's pronounced La Guillaume with a G, and the other half says, no, it's silent G, blah, blah, blah. Excellent company. I love the compact size of this. It's like, I think at nine centimeters. I've, I've done a video discussing the amazing history behind this knife. Religious cross there. The, the Napoleon B, etc. Et I love the story, I love the designs. They are very expensive, but I think worth it. I tend to carry this when I'm dressed a little bit more formally. Having a tactical thing like this just, you know, it just doesn't feel right. There's just something about a wooden or bone handle to a knife. It immediately is more classic, more traditional. It goes better with, you know, formal attire or casual smart, etc. Oh, and also a worthy point, I sometimes carry a secondary knife, depending on tools I want, like little mini scissors, uh, toothpicks, that kind of stuff that you don't get with the singular traditional, you know, larger 
a pocket knife like this. And there are a couple options available, so uh, let's, let's look at that now. Classic Victorinox. I love all the fun designs you can have with this because it's very handy. You've got the scissors, the toothpick, uh, nail file, all, all that kind of good stuff. And this has that too, and actually this has a little bit more as well. But obviously I'm not going to take both, you know, either one or the other, depending on what I need. Now let's talk about watches, uh, trends that for me have kind of come and gone in the last year. I'm definitely having a, a re-awakening, a re-appreciation of quartz watches. You know, I've talked endlessly about the little Dan Henry 1972 that I had fixed. I love the alarm, I love the complications. You know, I don't particularly want to spend all that money on a Porsche design um, or Fina, the one that it's obviously an ode to from Top Gun. Um, but for me, this is just fun. Fun, that is the most crucial word. Um, the same goes for the Mission Impossible and the, the Cartier Santos. Yes, obviously a luxury watch and, and costing into the thousands, but I still think it's great value for money. It's so iconic and that moon phase, the grab and go ease of uh, quartz, I'm, I'm starting to really appreciate. But don't get me wrong, I'm still loving my automatic watches. I'm getting back into kind of tooltastic watches. The Fortis uh, Marine Master has really piqued my interest. I might pick one of those up later this year. I want to see what else they come out with. What else? The GMT, the Rolex GMT. That complication has, again, had a, a kind of rebirth with working from home, um, doing Zoom calls with people overseas in different time zones. The GMT has become a fantastically useful tool. So those are my trends at the moment. I'm actually quite happy collect, you know, with my collection as it is. I'm not desperate for another watch. I mean, yeah, yeah I say that and then <laughs> there's some new Seiko or something comes up. I'm enjoying what I have at the moment and I think um, I'm going to focus on just reviewing watches for you guys and learning more about watches I haven't um, really experienced yet. I think that's what I'm going to do to kind of <laughs> keep me entertained. So I actually bought another one. This strap is from the Back to the Future calculator watch. It just really works, that whole retro vibe, and it makes this watch so comfortable. I wanted to get one that's more screen accurate with the uh, green print. This I wear at home. This one is my workout watch, and I've showered with it, sweated on it. It's taking a beating, and as you can see, the green is worn off. I've put it on an ATO. This is what I wear typically when I'm doing cardio. I put um, a filter in there, so it separates the screen if I'm timing. There we go. See, I, I jogged for 38 minutes and 30 something seconds. Uh, the bottom is the timer, quick and easy to distinguish. I just look at those numbers there, not in the green. For the sake of um, practicality, I, I customized it. Talking of watches, yeah, the old Santos. I am absolutely enamored with this watch. This has really revolutionized my uh, maybe maybe it's hyperbole, but uh, my appreciation for quartz watches. Yeah, I was looking out for one of these for almost six months, and I had to keep it secret because I didn't want to, didn't want anyone else to beat me to it. But I finally found the perfect Santos. So stay tuned for a follow-up video. This deserves. I mean, I've gone into the history and all the rest of it, but this deserves another. Another thing I always have is the Coppoloi. Uh, this one is Tiger Eye. Beautiful, beautiful gemstone, one of my favorites. For my Greek and Turkish gentry out there, you will know all about this. Shout out to Steve Papas. Anyway guys, uh, let me know your trends uh, for the past year, your EDC recommendations, your thoughts, what is in your EDC, all down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay.